Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about my great to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn the bell inside so once we have all the updated news, you'll be the first one getting all the insight. Now today's video is all about global talent. I've recently read an article published by the ASPI. Now what it is, it's actually a national strategic report about semiconductor industry. Now you may wonder, there's actually no semiconductor industry in Australia. Why would Australia do that? Now, we've gone through a COVID-19 pandemic. That means a lot of things has changed. That also changed the mind and changed the strategic policies of many nations. Australia is not long and it does looking forward into a high-tech world. And that is exactly why the Global Talent Visa was coined and started in late 2019. Now, this report is actually very interesting because it does shape a future, a high-tech future for the nation of Australia. So are you ready for a possible 50 billion money throw into the industry? in Australia, perhaps in the future, maybe that is for you. Now let's have a look of this report. I will have this report's link uh, underneath the, uh, the contents below. You may have a look. So came out straight away from Australian Strategic Policy Institute, ASPI. Now the report is actually published back in September, 21st of September, 2021. Well, we didn't pay too much attention, obviously. This is not directly connected to visa issues, immigration. However, um, I got pretty interested about this report because that's directly connected to the initiates and also the vision of GTI visa. As you can see, the topic, Australia's Semiconductor National Moonshot. Now, what does that mean? That means perhaps as a nation of Australia, they would like to take a moonshot means everything all in perhaps to see a major change for the nation's high-tech industry so it's a fairly long report now what does it do i probably just go through its subtitles and explain a little bit as i have gone through it so uh, over the past few years you may notice there has been a geopolitical things choking on the free trade and this shakeup is actually from China. Uh, you may notice the relationship between China and Australia did not go well and is still not well uh, since the change of the government. And obviously, the, the, Australia is not alone. Many nations around the world has seen what happened in Europe and the shakeup in Asia and Australasia. Obviously, there's a strategic policy has been cornered out by ASPI basically to see what can be done so as you can see there is a proposal to stimulate 5 billion semiconductor manufacturing activity through 1.5 billion government investments uh, and financial incentive now the reason I said 50 billion at the beginning of the of this video is because ultimately uh, the whole industry with public and private sector coming in that is the capacity of it and they're talking about mirror a similar initiative from the u.s chips and fabs act now very interesting that's basically a tax incentive credits for a global company to set up their factories advanced manufacturings in australia just like the silicon valley what they have both in in in, in the u.s and also what they have done in Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. Now, this directly connected to what we have in GTI is the advanced manufacturing sector, which we have done a lot and assist a lot of GTI applicants through. Now, if you are ready for this, perhaps you may want to go into that link down there, 
amecnews.com slash GTI form. Complete your detail. We will be able to actually contact you and consult whether or not you can actually meet the criteria requirement. All right, so what's the problem? We probably have just talked about it, about the chips, microchips, which had become a strategic uh, you know, commodity, should I say, uh, over what we have seen, the Ukraine and Russia war going on in Europe. They are noticing the, the, the high advance chip actually make a lot of differences for a nation's competitive future. So what's the solution? Um, obviously, they have talked about the this. They wanted to match this initiative, just like Australia's version of a 21st century moonshot instead of landing astronauts on the moon. But they wanted to do something in the semiconductor industry. It's actually very important because there has been a lot of uh, logistic links connecting the whole Asia and towards Europe. In, Austra- in America, but no Australia. So Australia is looking for a way to actually get this thing happening. And there is four things cornered out in this report. So first, it must embark and pick an uh, e- epic technology transfer initiative to successful Australia. Must attract, absorb leading edge technology, human capital. You see the word talent. Here we go. It's all about global talent, isn't it? And also the investment through rendering a strategic partnership with the world-class companies, universities, and friendly governments. The good news is that Australia already have the wealth and resource and building block which it can turn and, br- turn and bring this to fruition. So that's first. And secondly, it must be leveraged with security, partnership alliance with US, Britain, Japan, and all the other uh, partners, countries all around with the Quad, QUAD, AUKUS, FIFI's network, enable Australia semiconductors advancements. So third, Australia affirms local talents, meaning training the locals uh, to get the global value chain. Uh, not just a value chain, however, Australia's strategic industries must seek secure supply chain arrangement. Now, th- that's that is actually the hardest part because Australia traditionally in the past years has never really, uh, you know, get involved in the semiconductor and high tech industry. So perhaps uh, this will actually require the two points right above the first and second with the human capitals, the connections, resources, and also the government and the government around the world, friendly governments in order to get this third part done. Now, fourthly, is the uh, public sector that means bring the local governments and the state governments and the federal governments to form pu- public private partnerships basically to increase and improve the funding for semiconductor R&D and education create commercial incentive for foreign local investments now this is following very exciting things uh, which when I read about this um, I have been talking about this because it's just weird that back in 2019, a global talent visa actually been created. And I thought because high tech is never really a phrase that, you know, a general public in Australia actually talked about. We know there has been a lot of software utilization applications, but never nonetheless talking about the hardware and manufacturing, you know, advanced high tech manufacturers. You never seen one in Australia. And now I think it's a time, and the time has come. Now, continuing going on, uh, this is a fairly long read. It basically goes through the whole histories and how the, how the value of the money could actually be thrown in to the semiconductor manufacturing activity and stimulate 1.5 billion governments' fundings in the topics, and also talking about the geopolitical developments, which is basically what we have talked about, about the, 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 the threats coming from uh, China, and also because uh, China has done a lot of um, conduct in regards to the uh, embargoes of, of the trade, free trades, uh, not just Australia, 
but countries around the world. So they wanted to prevent something that has been happening in Europe. They don't want to be choked by particular countries. So Global Semiconductor in Initiative, the semiconductor landscape U.S. company, which remains a dominant force, embarked national uh, efforts reshore the bulk foreign outsourced chip manufacturing. In January 2022, U.S. Congress passed a chips. Act legislation provide U.S. 52 billion subsidies. Now, whether or not Australia actually grow from 5 billion to that 50 billion mark, I think ultimately will be there as long as we have a kickstart because the 5 billion is only, I think it's just a kickstart. Now, bear in mind, this is a, a, a strategic plan and proposal to the government of Australia. So other countries have rapidly followed U.S. example, Euro, Euro, Europe with the CHIP Act. 43 billion euro. Japan has stepped up with efforts upgrading stuff uh, and authorizing 6 billion, which includes subsidy to pay Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company TSMC to build the chip and manufacturing plan with Sony. So you see what's happening over there. And also in India, New Delhi sees its role in court and it's strategic decoupling from China as well. Now, that semiconductor industry also connects to all the computer parts and things. So that may be coming up uh, against what they call Made in China to 2025. So Australia is there to take up the space. Now, it's also talking about the unique attribute because there has been spectacle about the Australian economy. It's just too small to actually develop. But they have given a sample of what the uh, island and Dublin has done. And also, uh, I think this is really relevant because I, I'm, I'm born from Taiwan originally. Uh, back in the 1970s, similarly, Taiwan was an agricultural economy. Uh, and now become the world microchip uh, fabrication hotbed. Like Australia, Taiwan has maintained strong security tie with the U.S. successful leverage of the security relationship with the cheap technology transfer investment and world leading semiconductor player. So this this is just a, a beginning talking about a trend that can be done in the future uh, and matching up with uh, what the sample and testimony of how the other country had done and they use Taiwan as the uh, one one of the major sample I think there's also Japan and Korea has also done a very good transfer in technology as well and the, I mean this is huge the rest of the report uh, generates a lot of uh, key stats and things how each of the state will actually contribute into the future of this whole industry but here I wanted to you know do this video to actually let everybody know, although the whole ASPI report does not directly relate to visa and immigration policies, but you can see a major trend has come because a semiconductor industry is humongous, it's huge. Everything that you use, starting from mouse, keyboards, fridge, air conditionings, to your car, to all your iPhones, smartphones, computers, they all have chips. And even in the defense and space sector, everything is require semiconductor chips. And should Australia actually get into this, become possibly one of the world leader in the future, I mean, that's probably another five years, but an initiative, a report like this, plays very vital point there. Now, if you're interested about this, you may want to read more. And perhaps if you're a global talent, Make sure you click on that link down there or just go into that link, complete your form, complete the form. We may contact you in order about GTI visa. Anyway, should you have more question, query, more than welcome to leave comment right down below. And I'll see you next video. Goodbye.